okay, just going to refute Tommy McMurtry's bizarre uh, view on the pre-trip rapture, where he tries to say that additional details of it were revealed to Paul and that Matthew 24 is still about the rapture, even though there's no mention of dead saints rising in Matthew 24, he tries to address that. But his whole point of contention is to try and say basically that Matthew 24 is written to Christians and, you know, because that's, that's what these non-dispensational post-trip heretics always say is that Matthew 24 is for Christians and then we're going to examine Matthew 24 and show you that it is not written to Christians and compare it with the passages that Paul writes about the quote-unquote rapture and show how they don't line up. But let's play this. The common argument that's used when you point out that the rapture clearly comes after the tribulation in Matthew chapter 24. What the dispensations will often do is... Here's also a common tactic these guys will use. They'll say it comes after the tribulation, which they make the tribulation into a title, which it is a description, but is never once used as a title. The tribulation. The proper title is Jeremiah 30 verse 7, the time of Jacob's trouble, determined upon thy people Israel. You see Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 about that. It's for the Jews, not for Christians, but these... Um, heretics say that Christians have replaced the Jews and that we're now the chosen people. Nutty heresy, but let's continue. They'll say, well, Matthew 24, that's not talking about our rapture because we don't see dead saints rising. And so they will... Exactly. You don't see dead saints anywhere in Matthew 24. So if it's about the rapture, where's the dead saint? He tries to address that and totally messes up. But the thing is, like we've said before, Additional details don't necessarily create another event. And while we see the uh, dead in Christ rising in 1 Thessalonians 4, and we see in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul talking about the changed body, doesn't mean these are new events. These are all the same event. There is no denying that. But so here, here's a problem they get themselves into. Because Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans chapter 11, verse 13, and Romans 15, 16 make that clear. Paul is our apostle as Gentiles. He's our apostle for today. Matthew 24, Jesus Christ was clearly speaking to the Jews. I'm going to show that to you. Because they, again, they have to say that Matthew 24 is for Christians. So let's, let's just compare Matthew 24 uh, and just show you how it is not for us today, us as Christians. So it says, Matthew 24, 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So you have to endure to the end and be saved. I thought the Bible says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I thought the Bible says you're kept by the power of God. The Apostle Peter talks about that. And, and a quick side note about the Apostle Peter. Um, the Apostle Peter, some of what he says is applicable for Christians today. But you just got to be careful. Um, again, not going to go too much into that. But uh, you don't have to endure to the end to be saved. Who is it speaking to? Look at the next verse. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Um, we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Now, of course, these new IFB cultists, these nuts in the new IFB, they think we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom because they think the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of Christ are the same thing. Not true. The gospel of the kingdom is not the same thing as the gospel of Christ. The gospel of the kingdom is Jesus Christ presenting the kingdom of heaven to the Jews. The gospel of Christ is salvation by Jesus Christ. You know, I'm not going to get too much into that, but, you know, you got Matthew 24, 15. Uh, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of, Daniel, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. This creates kind of a problem for post-trippers because the Antichrist is going to stand in the holy place, but the Bible says that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So the Antichrist is going to stand in every single Christian that is alive. You know? Ridiculous. Major problem you get yourself into when you're a post-tribber. So, by their logic, basically the Antichrist is going to stand inside of Christians. You know? Ridiculous. Big, it makes a big problem. But look at verse 16. Then let them, let them, sorry, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, what are Christians doing in Judea? Um, since when are Christians told to go to Judea? Who is in Judea? It's the Jews. You jump down to verse 20. We pray, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So if you're a Christian, what are you doing with the Sabbath? Christians are not called to observe the Sabbath. Christians are not uh, commanded to observe the Sabbath. Romans 13.9 lists the commands for a New Testament Christian. And it does not mention keeping the Sabbath. 
speaking to the Jews. Romans thirteen nine. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, sorry, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any, or if there be any other commandment that is uh, briefly com comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, where is it mentioned keeping the Sabbath? You know, keep the Sabbath. You know, it should be holy. Paraphrasing, of course. He doesn't mention keeping the Sabbath. It's not a command for a New Testament Christian. But Jesus Christ says, you know, pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Who is it speaking to? He's talking to the Jews. Because who still observes the Sabbath? Jews. And here, here's, what, here's what they also love doing. For then shall there be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, so this time, no, nor ever shall be. Not the best at reading on a computer. But you'll see, see, great tribulation. See, it's a description. You'll see, see, they make it into a title. Then shall there be great tribulation. It's a description, never a title. Just had to point that one out. But you see there, it's to the Jews. Then, of course, uh, Matthew 24, 24. Here's a problem you get yourself into. If Matthew 24 is the same thing that Paul said, uh, Matthew 24, 24, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Um, Paul never mentions any great signs appearing. You know, there's no signs mentioned by Paul. So let me show you that. Because here we see great signs preceding the coming of Jesus Christ. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 51-58. You can just read it, and there's no signs mentioned anywhere in this passage. You know? Same thing with 2 Thessalonians. Sorry, I had something in my throat. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. Not one mention of any great signs. But you do see the dead in Christ arise first. So it's not talking about the same thing. You have great signs preceding the, the appearing of Jesus Christ. There's no signs mentioned anywhere by Paul. Then you got, of course, the, here's what they always go to, Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation, so see, see the tribulation, keep reading, of those days, shall the, sun be, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be, shall be shaken. Shall, shall, be, shall be shaken. Tongue twister there. Um, where is any of this mentioned by Paul? Where, where, is, where is the rapture, where the, the stars fall from heaven, and the power of the heavens shall be shaken? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. See again, great signs appearing of the heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Notice how the tribes of the earth are mourning. What does that line up with? Well, you know, I think it's, uh, I believe it's this passage right here. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon all... Upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him. You see, when Jesus Christ comes back, right now the Jews, they reject Jesus Christ. But when he comes back, they're not going to reject him anymore. They're going to realize, oh, you know, he was our Messiah. He was our, he was our Lord all along. And they're going to mourn, because they're going to realize that every single Jew that rejected Jesus Christ is sadly in hell right now. That's why they're mourning. They're mourning for whom whom they have pierced. Where is that mentioned by Paul? Where, where are we mourning for Jesus Christ coming? We're not. It's not talking about the same event. And, and you know, he tries to say, well, you know, uh, additional details are revealed to Paul. Let me show you something. Jesus Christ himself does reveal the rapture. John chapter 11, verses 25. Sorry. Actually, I'll start at verse 23. John chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Life, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. Talking about the resurrection of the dead, he reveals that. So, Jesus Christ, it wasn't. there was not additional details that were revealed to Paul. That's simple. Jesus Christ reveals the resurrection of the dead. He's not talking about the same event in Matthew 24. That's simple. But of course, these non-dispensational heretics can't see that. Because, you know, again, I don't make dispensationalism a salvation issue. But the dispensationalists who are not saved, they can't see that because they don't have the Holy Spirit. That's simple. So, just 
don't be deceived by non-dispensationalism. It is a satanic, very kooky heresy. It is wicked. It's very, very wicked because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. So, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.